Okay, so I recently posted to social media asking you for your questions about color and color mixing. I probably bit off more than I can chew because there's over 300 questions. So let's get started. The most popular question was, what's the most difficult color to mix? I think the best way to answer that is to start by answering, what's the easiest color to mix? The easiest color match is when you squeeze a color out of the tube and it matches perfectly. It's pretty rare, but I posted this video on TikTok on April Fool's Day. I also have it here on YouTube as a short. The next easiest color to mix is when there's only two colors that you have to add together. And that happened with this glass bowl. This blue is only ultramarine blue and white. So you only have to balance out the ratios between these two colors. It follows that the most difficult color to mix is the one with the most colors you have to add to it. That happens when I mix browns or grays from primary colors. Natural bodies of water like creeks and lakes are difficult to match because they're usually darker. And there's a lot of surface reflection, which makes it harder to judge the color. Plus the lighting conditions are constantly changing and the water is moving. Here's another recent video, and this one was difficult because it's a small moving cloud being reflected in a stream of water. And I only had so much time to match it before the cloud moved out of sight. There were lots of questions about what are the primary colors or what colors do you start with. Please explain how primary colors work and how magenta is one. The basic idea behind a primary color is that it's a base color that you can use to mix a wider range of colors. Another property of a primary color is that you can't mix it. So if you can mix a color, then by definition, it's not a primary color. In many of my previous videos, I demonstrated how you can mix red from magenta and yellow. So that leads me to believe that it's not a primary color. If you compare that to quinacridone magenta, there's no two colors you could mix together to create magenta. You have to just buy a tube of it. So that's the reason why I think magenta is the real primary color. Magenta is also used as a primary color in the printing industry. There are uses for red. I still use cadmium red or pyrrole red because they're a little more opaque and vivid than the red you can mix. But when you're mixing colors, you kind of have to think about magenta being the primary color, especially when you're trying to mix purples. Another clue is that when you mix red and blue together, it doesn't create a clean and vibrant purple. I've demonstrated that in another video about why I think color wheels aren't that good as a color mixing guide. In that video, I matched the red and the blue that are on that color wheel, and then I mix those two colors together and it does not create a vibrant purple. But if you use phthalo blue and quinacridone magenta and use that to make a purple, it turns out much more vibrant. I have a 60 minute color mixing course if you want to learn how to mix colors. The link is in the description below. There's a few questions here about how long did it take me to develop the skill. Well, even as a kid, I learned how to mix colors, but I didn't really do it in that precise of a manner. It wasn't until I got to college that I was challenged to match colors more precisely. There were a series of exercises that we had to do, and the first one answers this question about what about skin tones. And that was the first assignment was that we had to match the color of our skin, the underside of our wrists. I think that was just because it's not affected by like a tan or the hair on your arm or whatever. It's a more flat area of color. I have another video where I match skin tones and I paint a portrait from them. I give a few tips about how to go about mixing skin colors. And then we moved on to this assignment where we cut out flat areas of colors out of a magazine. And then you try and match that with acrylics. Here's a slide of that project from 1992. And I believe that the painted samples are on the right and the magazine swatches are on the left. There's some glare on the ones on the right, so it doesn't look as accurate as it was. But I do remember two of them were not as close as I wanted, but the rest of them seemed pretty accurate. While in that class, it only took us a couple of weeks to complete that assignment and everybody passed it. So you can learn quite a bit in a short amount of time. However, it will take you a little bit longer in order to be able to match colors quickly. I think some people struggled with matching a few of the colors, but the more you practice, the more intuitive it becomes and you don't have to think about it as much. How to prevent paint from drying out. It depends on what medium you're using. Oils take a long time to dry. It could take days or up to a week for a thin layer of oil paint to dry. Acrylics dry to the touch within minutes. It depends on your environment. If the humidity is higher, it'll stay wet longer. I use golden open acrylics, which have retarder in there and that keeps them wet for an hour or so, maybe even longer if it's, if it's humid and it's not too hot. The question doesn't really specify if you're talking about drying up on the palette or on the canvas. Maybe you're referring to both. There are wet palettes, they have sponges in them that will keep the paint wet for days and if you cover it, it can stay wet for weeks. I demonstrate how I handle that in my video about how to blend acrylics with oils. 
keeping the paint wet on the surface is a little bit more tricky. A lot of times you can mist the canvas with water, like with a spray bottle, and that will keep the paint wet longer. If you paint in thicker layers too, that'll stay wet longer. Like the thinner the layer is, the faster it'll dry. My favorite way is to just use slow drying acrylics, like golden open acrylics. And depending on your environment, you can keep them wet for maybe an hour or even a couple hours. Occasionally I'll come back the next day and the paint is still a little bit tacky. You can add retarder to regular acrylics. You don't have to buy open acrylics. So those are a couple options you could look into. People want to know what my favorite color is and what my least favorite color is. Those are really difficult for me to answer, but there's so many colors available and there's seriously, there's probably millions of colors. As far as maybe my favorite color in my palette might be quinacridone magenta. I think maybe because it's like an underdog. It's actually a primary color, but most people don't recognize it. It's also extremely useful for adjusting colors. And then there's a question about what do you do with your match colors. I made a short video about that and I show the little cards that I have. I got a big stack of them. I'm thinking about framing a few of them and just seeing if I could find a good way to frame them and present them. Maybe I'll offer them for sale. Let me know in the comments what you think about those ideas. How expensive are the paints? That depends on the quality of the paint and that's true of every painting medium. There's usually a line of professional paints and then there's like a student version. The professional paints can be pretty expensive. I calculated that in my one blog post about how to save money on art supplies. I calculated the cost of paint per gallon. It's amazing how expensive it is. It could be hundreds of dollars per gallon, but the student grade paints are much more affordable and some of them are actually fairly decent. I use the student grade water mixable oils from Cobra and those work well. And Liquid Text Basics are pretty decent too. There's a few questions here about making mistakes and they're mostly referring to mixing colors. So do you ever make a mistake when you mix the colors? Yeah, all the time you'll hear me say, that's too much. That's too much. Oof, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. Uh, that was too much. That was too much. It's a little too much. It's a little too much. It's a little bit too much. That might be a little too much. It's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much. It's probably too much. It's probably too much. Oh, that's too much. Oh, that's way too much. And the idea is that you don't want to make bold moves. You can test out your theory before you add too much of a color. And it's easier for you to use like a larger volume of paint. That way you can add in a little bit at a time to see if it makes the change you're looking for. I wouldn't throw the paint out if you make a mistake. You could just scrape it off to the side and mix it together. Usually it'll make like a brownish color or like a brownish gray color, and you can use that in other paintings. I made a few videos about that, like when I clean off my palette, I'll just scrape up all the paint and then mix it up in like a smaller container. That's only if the paint is still good. If it's starting to dry up and get chunky or if it smells funny, then you should probably just scrape it off and let it dry in a paper towel and throw it out. Doesn't it appear that color mixing skill has more to do with math than with artistic endeavor? That's an interesting question and I had to think about this one. I think there's two sides of this and if you look at how they mix colors at like a hardware store, it's definitely all math and software. The way a computer handles color, it totally is math. It's all based on numbers. But when you paint, you really don't rely on software or scales to measure out the colors. You have to do it by eye. The interesting thing is, that even if there was a way to look up a color in a book or weigh it out with a scale and get the precise color that you want, I would still do it by eye because it's, it's faster. In my video about color mixing tips for beginners, I compare how long it takes me to mix a color by eye to how long it takes me to look up a color in a Pantone book. And it's actually faster for me to mix it. So that adds up when you work on a painting that has hundreds of colors in it, it's much faster to just mix it by eye than it is to stop what you're doing and try and like find a formula in a book or to weigh out the colors on a scale. So here's a similar question. And here it is. It's, I'm not sure if this will make sense. Is color all about ratio? Like a specific orange would be two to one, yellow to red, no matter the amount. Yeah, that's pretty much color mixing in a nutshell. The challenge as an artist is that there's really no way to measure that out. If you were to devise a system for measuring it out, it would probably take too long to do that. So you have to just judge it by eye. This video is starting to get long. I have a lot more questions to answer. Let me know in the comments if you think I should make more videos in this style. I'd like to thank everybody for submitting questions and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate the support. Thank you for watching.